Okay, welcome. So today I want to offer some reflections about Jeremy Clarkson and what he said in the press last week about Meghan Markle and some of the abusive comments that he made. And I want to talk about the psychology of this, drawing this down into some of his early childhood experiences and seeing how some of his comments mirror very precisely what happened to him as a child in boarding school. And I'd like to draw upon Nick Duffel's work, Peter Levine, and other authors as well, just to, to bring this to light. So, enjoy. So, a Friday, in an article in The Sun newspaper, uh, Jeremy Clarkson, who is well known here in the UK for having done things like Top Gear and The Grand Tour on Amazon, who is essentially a journalist and a TV presenter. Now, Jeremy Clarkson went to boarding school. Now, I don't know the age precisely, but I believe it was 11. Went to a boarding school in Doncaster, where he was born, and he hated it. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that. But first of all, I'll just put into context what he said, and then I'll, I'll bring in how that links into his boarding school. So he's talking about Meghan Markle. He says, Meghan, though, is a different story. I hate her. Not like I hate Nicola Sturgeon or Rose West. I hate her on a cellular level. At, at night, I'm, I'm unable to sleep as I lie there, grinding my teeth and dreaming of the day when she is made to parade naked through the streets of every town in Britain while the crowds chant shame and throw lumps of excrement at her. Everyone who's my age thinks the same way. And I will say I'm the same age as him bit younger but I don't believe that that's all so he added um, but what makes me despair is that younger people especially girls think he's pretty she's pretty cool now his daughter has come out online to say she doesn't agree with his words at all and interestingly he sent her to boarding school as well so we'll talk about that in a second uh, they think that she was a prisoner of Buckingham Palace forced to talk about nothing but embroidery and kittens so let's unpick this. So Jeremy Clarkson went to boarding school, like I said, and in an article in 2000, oh, it was, I think, on Top Gear or one of the, um, he was reviewing a, a car, I think it was a Range Rover, 2015. He says, I was made, this was at boarding school, I was made to lick the lavatories clean and boys defecated in my tuck box. So these are things that happened to him as a child. For me, this is a huge trauma. Yeah. And it's interesting how he uses almost the same words about throwing lumps of excrement at Meghan Markle for what actually happened to him as a child. Now, if I draw on, first of all, the work of Peter Levine, who's one of the leading world's leading trauma specialists uh, in this book, Waking the Tiger. I've spoken about this before. Um, I come back to this because I just feel it just connects. He says, the impact of trauma may not be fully conscious, but it is certainly fully active. In an insidious way, trauma contributes to the motives and drives of our behaviour. You know, that for me is why he's written this article on one level. What this means is that a man who was hit as a child will feel compelled to hit as an adult. So if you hear... Uh, and read this article from 2015. I'll, I'll put a link into it, the description so you can read it. He basically saying that he was really badly bullied at school. So it's interesting how he's become the bully. I think he he's punched the producer of Top Gear. Um, you know, he's often hitting out and often the defense is. And I read this from um, a member of parliament defending him, saying that. Um, oh, he's just joking. And Nick Duffel talks about this in his book, Wounded Leaders, that often in the UK, we defend by saying, oh, it's only a joke. Are you, are you not having fun? And for me, 6,000 people have written in to complain about this. And, you know, it's like, this is, this is offensive. You know, this is not okay for me. That people are, are able to do this. So I want to talk a little bit about you know, some of the other aspects here 
So another talking uh, quote from Jung, he says, the psychological rule states that when an inner situation is not made conscious, it happens outside as fate. So here he is, he's been bullied, he's not processed that, it's still unconscious, and he puts it out onto the world. Yeah, so he goes on to say, that is to say, when the individual remains undivided and does not become conscious of his inner opposite, the world must perforce act out the conflict and be torn into opposing halves. So here he's saying he hates her. Yeah. But I hate her on a cellular level. So we we'll go into the psychology a bit of that. But essentially that is what he feels about himself on a psychological level. You know, this is what he learned. And this coming into boarding school syndrome. One of the things I learned at school was you learn to hate the feminine because your mother's not there. Um, and if I kind of quote Nick Duffel from his book, he talks about um, one of his friends, a writer saying, uh, the French are maternally oriented and have as their eternal heart the home and the rituals of table and family life, whereas somehow the British aspire to a kind of matricide in their institutions, you know, murdering the mother. And I see that with his attack. He's attacked Megan. He hasn't attacked Harry. And that's another thing we learnt at boarding school. Was that, you know, if you saw of someone as better than you, you wouldn't dare attack them. So seeing someone in a position of power like Harry, you know, royalty. But someone who didn't go to boarding school, who's not even British. It's like, ah, you know, attacking her. You know, you... That's what we did at school. Those on the year below, they would, we would, they would be our fags. They would do jobs for us. They would, um, you know, uh, have to get out of seats if we were wanted to sit and watch TV or or somewhere. You know, they got the last in line for food and things like that. So that was another aspect to it. Um. What else is in here? Um, yeah, another thing Robert Vercake talks about, who I interviewed, uh, on, I think it was episode 45, um, and he talks about it in this book, that 50 out of 100 journalists have been to boarding school. And if you look at the ownership of the newspapers, The Sun is owned by Robert Murdoch. Robert Murdoch, um, Rupert Murdoch, sorry, Rupert Murdoch is was at boarding school, Geelong Grammar School in, in um, Australia. And then the uh, Daily Mail, again, um, Lord Rothermore, I believe, he was also um, uh, at boarding school. So it's like 50 out of 100 of the top journalists have been to boarding school or private school. Um, what else did I want to talk about here? I think there was another aspect from Inner Work, Robert A. Johnson. And he talks about this, about a, a client who comes to me who basically is writing this story. And he's saying it's he's just made this up. And I see this with journalists. They create these stories. So here is um, you know, this Jeremy Clarkson who's written this. And really what he's, for me, from a psychological perspective, he's just writing about his own inner world. And this is what this Jungian analyst, uh, Robert A. Johnson, talks about. You see, even when he was trying to conjure up his fake story, talking about this client, in order to fool me and ridicule the whole process, that fake story had to come out of his own insides. This story that Jeremy Clarkson's just done has come out of his own inside, his own psychological guts, as it were. While he thought he was inventing something, he was spilling out the secret contents of in his interior being. This is really, really powerful. And often, you know, our journalists don't realise that. They're just spilling out their unconscious trauma. And, you know, I want to move on a little bit to some of the solutions here. And one of the solutions is Matthew Green, who I spoke to podcast 48 and he talks about this 
about a trauma-informed media. So he's a former Financial Times and Reuters journalist who now works with climate control uh, as a media, as a journalist in climate um, control. And he says it's important for us to create this trauma-informed media, meaning that we're aware what we're putting out. Do I share this story or is that going to um, create more trauma or not? And I think that's, you know, certainly one of the solutions. Another solution is, you know, and Matthew Green talks about this. We give our power to these people, to the Jeremy Clarks and, and the, um, you know, the media. And he says, we've just got to draw our energy away from them. You know, give our dollars to those benevolent news companies to give our money to leaders who are leading us well. You know, the Buddha talked about this in a story about called the anger eating demon. That there's a story of this king, a throne room, while king's away, a demon comes in and the courtiers are really upset and they do everything, get angry. They shout at this demon to try and get him out of this throne room keeps growing in size the more they pay attention to him then the king returns and he sees the demon there it's filled the whole of this throne room and he starts to be really kind to the demon he loves him he goes oh can i get you some food massages his feet each time the demon shrinks inside until he eventually disappears and i feel this is what we need to do with our modern day media is to stop giving the attention and i know i'm giving attention now and yet, can we bring that trauma-informed consciousness into our media? So creating new systems. And I'll find a link to, um, to Matthew's um, website so you can go and read his, his information. But I think, yeah, that's one of the solutions. Um, yeah, some of the other quotes from in here that I thought were really relevant were... Here he talks about if his formative years, so any leader, were spent in an elite boarding school and his life has been unexamined, then his patterns of behaviour will most likely be defensively organised and outside his conscious control. So here I feel, yeah, he's talked about Megan in this way and it's outside of his conscious control. It's just come out from his insides. As an unreconstructed ex-boarder, what I call a boarding school survivor. Such a leader will be unconsciously trapped somewhere between a childhood he never probably had and maturity obscured by his pseudo-adult personality structure. And that's what I'm seeing with Jeremy Clarkson, this pseudo-adult personality structure. Um, And so, yeah. So I think we'll draw that to an end now. Um, but just to bring some, yeah, just some ideas. I don't know if I'm right. I'm just quoting different texts, but I feel that we as a society need to be aware. Oh yeah. These are the people who are putting this information out there. And what can we do? Where's this coming from within them? And for us as choosing, do I want to listen to read these people? And you know, what type of media do we want? So please do visit, um, Matthew's um, website below Um, and yeah I've got a podcast coming up on Friday with um, Paul de Blasi III a uh, clinical psychologist which is a fascinating interview talking about trauma self-sabotaging finding safety and I've also got another podcast next week about uh, boarding school from the feminine perspective What are some of the experiences that um, girls and boys have had to go through at boarding school? And that's with Rosemary. Um, uh, It's La Maison, but it's that's not how you pronounce it. So um, I will share that next week. So have a wonderful Christmas and New Year and wishing you uh, many blessings. Take care.